Biceps femoris anatomy. The biceps femoris is a muscle of the posterior thigh. It has two heads, a long head and a short head. The biceps femoris is one of the three flexor muscles of the posterior thigh. They call them the hamstring muscles. What are the three muscles? The biceps femoris, the long and short head, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. The ischial tuberosity is divided by a transverse ridge into an upper quadrangular portion and a lower triangular portion, and each portion is divided into medial and lateral parts. Here you can find the origin of the common tendon between the biceps femoris muscle and the semitendinosus muscle. The biceps femoris has two heads of origin. The long head of the biceps femoris arises from the upper and medial part on the back of the ischial tuberosity. The short head of the biceps femoris arises from the lateral lip of the linea aspera on the posterior femur. Both heads of the biceps femoris are inserted into the head of the fibula along with the lateral collateral ligament and the popliteofibular ligament. And you can see here the insertion of the structures from anterior to posterior on the fibular head. The lateral collateral ligament, the popliteofibular ligament, and the biceps femoris tendon is the most posterior structure on the proximal fibula. Hamstring injuries. The upper medial portion of the ischial tuberosity is where the insertion of the biceps femoris and semitendinosus is located. Muscle strains or tears of the muscle can occur in sports that require rapid acceleration and deceleration. Eccentric loading of the muscle and the tendon may cause these injuries. Injury usually involves the myotendinous junction approximately 12 cm distal to the ischium. Complete rupture or avulsion from the ischial tuberosity may also occur. Here is an MRI that shows complete rupture of the tendon. This complete rupture usually needs repair. If not repaired, the rupture will lead to significant functional impairment, which is more profound during vigorous activity. High static nerve lesions can mimic perineal neuropathy at the fibular head. The patient in both conditions will have foot drop, so we don't know if the lesion occurs from the common perineal nerve at the knee level from a common perineal injury or it occurs at a higher level from a high static nerve injury. So how do we tell the difference? Both patients will have a foot drop. When we do EMG, if we find there's EMG abnormalities in the short head of the biceps femoris muscle, then this lesion is a high static nerve injury. But if we find that the short head of the biceps have no EMG changes, the lesion occurs from injury to the common perineal nerve at the fibular head, and the lesion is not to the static nerve. Innervation of the biceps femoris muscle. The long head is innervated by the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve, L5 to S2. The short head of the biceps femoris is innervated by the common perineal branch of the sciatic nerve, L5 to S2. The sciatic nerve starts in the lower back and runs through the buttock and the lower limb. 
In the thigh, the tibial part innervates the long head of the biceps femoris muscle, while the perineal part innervates the short head. The tendon of the biceps femoris muscle forms the lateral hamstring. The biceps femoris muscle vascular supply is derived from the perforating branches of the inferior gluteal artery, from the profunda femoris artery, and the popliteal artery. Here is a diagram of the popliteal fossa area. At this level, the sciatic nerve travels down the thigh to the area of the popliteal fossa, and at this point, it divides into the tibial and the common perineal nerves. What is the function of the biceps femoris? The biceps femoris muscle flexes the knee joint and laterally rotates the knee joint when the knee is flexed. The biceps femoris also extends the hip joint, and that occurs by the long head only. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.